Hi everyone, my name is Nusha Jmudril. Um, I'm a senior consultant at KX. I've been working with KDB for about six years now, uh, most recently at JP Morgan, but uh, before that at Morgan Stanley. So uh, today I'm going to be talking about a developer utility toolkit written by Leslie Goldsmith, who's a managing director and a senior solutions architect uh, at KX. So I'm first just going to give a brief overview of what the utilities include, uh, and then I'm going to spend the rest of uh, the presentation demoing the use of these utilities. So the developer toolkit consists of four scripts. The first one is the Q code profiler. In short, that allows us to uh, understand what our code is spending time doing. Um, the second script, uh, wuss.q, it contains routines for workspace exploration. So with this, we can answer questions such as where in particular in our code is a certain thing defined, where else is it used, where does a particular typo come from. The third utility is a display utility. So this helps us to understand what a particular Q object is by visualizing its structure and explicitly declaring its type. And finally, there is ed.q, which contains two flavors of an in-workspace uh, editor for functions that allows us to easily modify functions without having to do things like reloading files in, uh, in our Q session. What I'm going to be doing in the demo is I'm going to use a sample smart meter database and functions that are up on uh, code.kx uh, website as part of a tutorial. And what I did was I combined a bunch of uh, the analytics in the tutorial into a single function, dot, 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 summary, which represents some sort of a monthly usage and billing report for a particular set of smart meters. Now, the reason I use that is because I didn't write this code and I don't know anything about smart meters. And so I want to use Leslie's utilities and demonstrate that they can help me to understand code that I'm unfamiliar with. Uh, so uh, maybe also find and correct some bugs and um, see if they can help me get ideas for how to improve the performance. Uh, of this code. Switching over to the demo now over here, what I have is a queue session into which I've preloaded the four utility scripts, the functions, and, uh, and the database. So I know from the, instru the instruction, what I really want to run is dot, dot, dot summary to get the monthly report. But maybe before I do that, I just want to get the high level overview of what this function is. Uh, so for that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, utility dot bus dot fn sum. I'm going to pass it the function name and what it tells me is something very simple but I think useful. The function has 15 lines and it takes one parameter as, uh, as, as the input. It's called month. Next, I'm going to run this uh, dot bus dot uh, fn tree utility. And what this is going to give me is this function's family tree. So what I can see is at the top level, uh, this function is calling 10 or so other functions, most of which call a lot of, uh, a lot of other functions. And maybe what I notice here is that this meter usage strand repeats quite a lot. So I wonder, is this necessary? And maybe that's a red flag. So now I'm going to run this, and because this is going to take a minute, I'm just going to run it, and now I'm going to explain what I've run. So uh, I'm running my, uh, my function here, and I'm assigning the output to the variable res, but before I executed the function, I also enabled profiling on it. So I do this with, uh, by using the utility.prof.prof, and what I'm passing to it is basically a list of function names, all of the function names from this function tree. Uh, and I get those by using this uh, .bus.rcalls. 
uh, utility. Then after uh, the function runs, I'm collecting the output of the profiler uh, using .prof.report in a variable R1. And finally, I'm on profiling everything uh, that I've just profiled. So before I turn to the output of uh, the profiler, maybe I just want to understand a little bit, like, what's this output of the function, like, what is res? And so what I'll do first is I'll run dot was dot varsum, which tells me that res is of type y, which means dictionary, and in this context, shape 10 means it has 10 keys. So if I print it out, I get something like this, and now... I maybe wonder what are these values and find myself and I think a lot of people in this room understand exactly of what type these values are, but maybe if somebody has less experience, we might want to take a look at these values differently. And so for this, what I can do is I can use uh, the display utility and the display utility is going to basically be printing everything to to my screen, so I don't want to print too much. So what I'm actually going to print is uh, a subset of each of the values. So I'm just going to do that. And this is what I got. So this doesn't fit on the screen. Let me try to scroll here. So my first key, uh, or the, the value of the first key is nothing special, it's a month, but the rest of the values over here, as I think is obvious from this, are either keyed or unkeyed tables. So unkeyed tables will be tagged with A, and keyed tables will be tagged with, with Y. I think I understand at this point what the function inputs are, what the code execution path is, and I understand the output. So now let's turn to the output of the profiler. So, okay, this is again not really the thing, but I'll just scroll up a bit. Okay, so what the output of the profiler here gave me is for every line of every function that my summary function has executed. So. Uh, it gives me the name of the function, the line number, the first few characters from that line, and then it tells me how many times this particular line was executed as part of this code. It gives me the total time that was spent uh, on this line, including subcalls to other functions. It gives me own time, which is the time that, has, that was spent on the line itself ex excluding calls to subfunctions, and then it gives me the percentage of time um, that was spent on this line relative to all other lines, all ordered in uh, descending order of own time. So I think it's fairly clear from this what the, uh, what the sort of bottlenecks are in my code. So almost two thirds of the time is spent in this daily stats function, the first line of it, um, it was called three times, uh, followed by group usage, usage per period, and so on. And another thing that I notice is, is that total and own time for these bottlenecks are the same, which means that basically whatever that line is doing is where, uh, where the time is consumed. And then after this is where this relationship reverses, where... Um, the rest of these calls, most of the time in these calls, are actually spent in some other calls outside of this. So if I want to optimize, you know, I think I got a fairly good idea, a uh, fairly good idea where to start. So because I'm on a timer here, let's just take a look at the first, first two bottlenecks and see if we can do anything. Um, anything about them. So maybe I'll start with uh, with group usage and okay here I, I think I have the first 50 characters like I can't really um, determine anything um, from this line but 
what I can do, however, is I can call the following utility. And what I get is every building block of the function group usage classified into what it is. So daily stats is a function. We have a few keywords used in this function. We have a couple of parameters. We have a global variable. Uh, we have uh, some local variables as well. The numbers next to each one of these um, identifiers of the function is uh, the line number in the function where this identifier was called. Uh, together with some additional information where possible. So here, daily stats is a function, so this bracket here next to line six means that the function is invoked in line six of group usage. Over here, with this local variable t, it's defined first on line seven, it's redefined on line 17, and then referenced again on line 17 and on line 19. So cool. What I notice here as well is that I have this uh, question mark next to local variable TSD. Uh, and what question mark means, it means something suspicious. So something that is not necessarily going to cause an issue in my code, but it might do. So I wanna take a, uh, I wanna take a closer look at that. And what I see is that this local variable is defined on line six of the function, but it's not referenced anywhere else. So why is it there? It sounds redundant. So I say, let's remove it. Uh, and what I'll do here is I'm, to, I'm going to use uh, the QEd utility, which is a native Q in Workspace editor. And this opens up the function in the in workspace editor, so it labels all of the lines nicely. So indeed, here is my uh, here is my TSD, and what I'm going to say is delete it and prove that. Let's just print it out again. It's gone, and I'm going to save this uh, this changed definition of group usage. So I think I have another thing to to look at uh, come on. the real bottleneck, uh, daily stats. Okay, so let's go back down. And here, uh, I'm going to use the other flavor of the in workspace editor, um, uh, just called ed, and I'm gonna invoke it. And what this is going to do is it's going to open up this definition of the function in Notepad++, which is my editor of choice, but it would work with any other uh, OS-based uh, OS -based editor. And so, I mean, what is this doing? It's getting the delta between first and last usage, and then it's getting individual deltas by date and meter ID from um, this HDB. And then on top of that, it's selecting the high, the low, and the average. So can we do better, uh, better in terms of performance? This requires some thinking. I've done thinking at home, so I uh, left myself a helpful note here for what I need to change. So I'm just going to modify that and all of this can go. Uh, so I save this, and I try to X back out. Oops, it's telling me I made an error. So I'm gonna go back in, and I'm gonna fix my error. I'll close it, I'll try to X back out, and it's redefined it. Um, so maybe now at this point, like I could have kept drilling, but for uh, the sake of this demo, maybe I'm just going to uh, profile the execution of the same function uh, now again and collect the results and we'll see how we're doing. 
every other time I tried this at home, we were doing better. <laughs> but uh, but let's see uh, let's see what's uh, what's gonna happen here. So let me just take the first five uh, profiler output uh, lines from the first run we did, and then I'll take uh, the first five from this run that we did and. It's not great, but it's better, right? So daily stats here now is only uh, actually executed executed once because we've removed it out of the out of the group usage uh, function and instead of eighteen seconds. So yeah, this is uh, this is now spending only uh, only three seconds of time and group usage here. It's not actually better that much, but because we haven't actually changed the line that's uh, that's slow, but what we have done is we've identified another problem with it, which was this unnecessary uh, unnecessary local variable uh, that we removed, which will show up in uh, the overall uh, execution time. So if I just do a select. So, R1, so it was 26 seconds earlier, and it was 9 seconds now. So, pretty good. Like I said, I could have kept drilling in the rest of the bottlenecks now and improving, but I think for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to stop here. I'm just going to conclude by saying that in just a few minutes and only using my Q console and Leslie's utilities, what I was able to do is I was able to take code that I was unfamiliar with. I was able to understand inputs, outputs. I was able to understand cross references and execution paths. I was able to identify bottlenecks in the code, find some bugs, fix them, and also improve the performance. And I think the utilities are actually super easy to use. And if you look on Git, GitHub, they also come with, uh, with wonderful documentation. <clears throat> so to me, this has very clear real life applications. Obviously, we can use these utilities in our own development process for benchmarking our own performance or even for uh, debugging or just for faster in session development. Really, it can be, they can be a tool in code reviews. We can use them as documentation enhancers, so these uh, cross-references and function trees, I think, are, uh, are very useful. Um, the profiler, as well, has a very low overhead, so it's actually suitable for profiling entire workspaces or even entire applications. And so I don't see a reason why we couldn't use this in some sort of a pre-prod uh, environment to verify, uh, to verify our releases or even for debugging production issues. That's all I have to say. I hope you're all gonna try Leslie's utilities. One thing that's worth mentioning at this point is that, so the profiler, the workspace script, and the display utility script are up on, Git on GitHub. Editors are not up yet, but Leslie's gonna put them up soon. And then also a new version of the workspace utilities which is what I use today, is going to be coming soon alongside uh, the editor. So yeah, stay tuned.